Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will attempt to create trade signals to know when to buy and sell stock using the simple moving average crossover strategy and Python. In this strategy I will buy shares of a stock when the short term moving average crosses above the long term moving average and I will sell shares of a stock when the short term moving average crosses below the long term moving average. Now before we begin, if you like the videos on this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos from this channel, hit that bell notification. The material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice as I am no advisor, so invest at your own discretion. Okay, so I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing this code, go ahead and click on File, then click on New Notebook and a new tab open up for you and then eventually a new cell. And in this cell, I'm gonna put in some comments. I'm gonna put in a description about the program. So I'm just gonna type use the simple moving average crossover crossover strategy and Python to get buy and sell signals okay and then I want to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left and in this cell I'm going to import the libraries so I'm going to import NumPy as, I need to spell import correctly. So I'm going to import NumPy as NP, and I'm going to import pandas as PD, and then I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as BLT, and I'm going to give the plot a style. So I'm just going to type blt.style.use, and I'm going to use the 538 style. And then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this will let me know if I made any mistakes. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. Now in this cell, I want to I want to load the data. So I want to load the stock data for Housing Development Finance Corporation Limited. So to do this, I need to use Google's library. So from google.colab, I'm going to import files and then I'm just going to type files.upload and then run this cell and click on choose files and I'm going to upload this hdfc.csv file so it's been uploaded let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's store that data all right so I'm going to create a variable called df and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv and then I'm going to input the name of that file hdfc.csv and then I want to show the data so I'm just going to type df here and let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now we can see that this data contains a date column, a high price column, a low price column, an open price column, a close price column, a volume column, and adjusted close price column. All right, and we have 985 rows of data and of course those seven columns that I just mentioned. And then we have our indices here as integer values to the left. So I want to make those indices to be the date equivalent. So to do that, we just have to set it that way. So let's go ahead and set the date as the index. So set df equal to df.set underscore index and then input pd.datetime index and then in there put df date dot values. All right, and let's run this again. And now we can see that the indices have changed to be the date. All right, so let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I want to visually show the close price. So just type plt.figure and then give the figure a figure size. So I'm gonna set the figure size equal to 16 by eight. And then I'm gonna give my plot a title, so I'm going to type guilty dot title, and I'm going to put close price history, and 
I will give this a font size. So I will set font size equal to 18. And then I will plot the data. So just type filter.plot and put df close because we want the close price. And let's give, I think that's good actually. Um, all right, so let's give our plot a label on the x axis. So just type plt.x label and then input date here. And let's give that a font size equal to 18. And let's give our plot a y label. So let's call the label on the y axis close price. All right, and let's give that a font size as well. So let's set the font size equal to 18. And then let's show the plot. So just type plt.show. And let's run this. OK, so there we go. We can see the date on the x axis. We can see the close price on the y axis. And of course, our title here. And we have this nice visual now of our data for the close price. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to create a function to calculate the simple moving average or SMA for short. So let's call this function SMA. It's gonna take in some data and it's gonna take in some time period. So I'm gonna set that time period equal to 30 and then it's gonna take in some column I'm going to default that column to be the close price column. All right, then I'm going to return the data at that column dot rolling. And I'm going to give this a window equal to period. And I want the average, so I'm going to put dot mean here. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this cell. And then I'm going to create a new cell. And in the cell, I'm going to create two new columns to store the 20 day and 50 day simple moving average. All right, so let's go ahead and create that first column, SMA 20. And let's set this equal to our function SMA. It's going to take in some data, which will be DF, and some time period, which will be 20. And then I'm going to just highlight this and copy using control C, then come down here and paste it using control V. And instead of SMA 20, I'm going to make this SMA 50 and the time period will be 50 as well. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. So that looks good. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I'm going to get the buy and sell signals. All right. So I'm going to create a, another column called signal. And I'm going to set it equal to to np dot where the the simple moving 20 day average or SMA 20 is greater than the simple moving average for the 50 day time period. OK, if it is, then I'm going to return one else. I'm going to return zero. OK. OK, so next I'm going to create another column called position and I'm going to set this equal to df signal dot diff. OK, so let's just talk a little bit about what just went on here. So here I created a new column called signal and this right here will will get the signal when the SMA 20 crosses above the SMA 50 and the signal will be rep represented by the number one else it will be represented by the number zero if the SMA 20 does not cross above the SMA 50 okay and now here I created another column called position and I'm getting the difference so this will get the the furthest day price and it will subtract it from the current day price all right so what that means here we'll basically get either one minus zero we'll get one minus one 
0 minus 0 or 0 minus 1. Okay, and this actually, believe it or not, gives us both the buy and sell signals. All right. Okay, so now both buy and sell signals are within position. So let's go ahead and separate the buy and sell signals. So when the position is 1, that tells us that that's a buy signal. That tells us that that the simple moving average for the short term is above the simple moving average for the long, the long term. And of course the long term is the simple moving 50 day average. Okay? So hopefully I haven't lost you all, but let's go ahead and continue. So I'm going to create a new column called buy and I'm going to set this equal to np dot where df position equals one and if it does I'm going to store the close price else I'm going to put a NAND value all right and I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to copy using control C and then paste it using control V here and I'm going to create a cell column and we know that it's the cell column when the position is negative one and if it is then we're going to put the close price else we're going to put the NAND value all right so just like that we've created our buy and sell signal so let's go ahead and run this and let's create a new cell and now let's visually show the close price with the SMAs and the buy and sell signals. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here where we already kind of did this a little bit. I'm going to highlight this, copy using control C, then come down here and I'm going to paste it using control V. And let's change the title to be, we'll keep close price history for now. And I put with with buy and sell signals okay and maybe I put the ampersand okay so we're gonna plot the close price but I'm gonna give it an alpha equal to 0 0.5 and I'm gonna give it a label as well so the label will be close okay and then I'm going to plot the SMAs. So let's go ahead and highlight this, copy using control C and paste it two times using control V. And I'm going to plot SMA 20, the short term SMA. And I'm going to plot SMA 50, the long term SMA. And let's change the labels to be SMA 20 and SMA 50. All right, and then I want to plot those buy and sell signals. So type plt dot scatter, put in df dot index, and then df buy. All right, I'm going to give it an alpha equal to one, and then I'm going to give it a label. So I'm going to set the label equal to buy signal and then I'm going to give it a marker so I'm going to set the marker equal to this up character if I can find it there we go and I will give this a color so the color will be green okay and I'm going to highlight this copy using control C and then come down here and paste it using control V and basically do the same thing but for the cell signal so I'm going to get the cell column I'm going to make the label cell signal the marker will be AV for down and the color will be red okay so I think that'll do it let's go ahead and run this all right so there we go let's take a look at this plot so this strategy tells us to buy here and then sell here 
and then to buy here and sell here it looks like we would be profitable for both of these buy and sell signals but here we have a problem it tells us to buy here and then sell here so we would have lost some money there and then it tells us to buy here sell here we would have been profitable uh, buy here sell here we would have been profitable buy here sell here we would have been profitable buy here sell here we would have been profitable buy here sell here we would have been profitable and then there's actually a small buy signal here and another sell signal I really can't tell if we would have been profitable or not but as you can see the strategy isn't perfect but I thought that this would be a fun project so I hope you all enjoyed it okay well that's the end of the video to start an investment portfolio of your own you can click on the link below in the description and get two free stocks valued up to $1,850 on Webull when you deposit $100 or more on that platform and don't forget to grab $10 worth of Bitcoin using the BlockFi link below when you also deposit $100 or more so this is basically free money. Thanks for watching and thank you to the supporters supporting this channel on Patreon.com. I will leave a link to my Patreon as well if you want to become a member. Again, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.